Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In today's episode of Friday Morning Ramblings, we'll tour the garden. I'll show you how the cool weather crops are going. We're finally getting regular temperatures at night in the upper 40s. Days are staying in the 60s and 70s. All the cool weather crops are really taking off. I'll be removing all the tomato plants, all the warm weather crops. I'll talk about that. I'm also in the process of constructing new beds. I did a video on this already. Um, and I'm dropping in more beds like this through the perimeter, the outside of my prop, uh, the outside of my garden, along the perimeter of the fence, to grow more onions, more leeks, more garlic, more things that the deer aren't going to eat, so that I can take those plants out of the inside of my garden and then grow plants that need to be protected. And that's, that's just something that you know I think it makes good sense. Now is a great time to set up beds put them in place, and then come spring, they're gonna be ready to go. Here's a nice mistake too. I left out my organic granular fertilizer. It got rained on, so that's pretty much wasted. If you have the granular fertilizer that gets soaked, it's gonna smell, it's gonna smell really bad actually, because it's usually chicken manure. Just throw it into your compost pile. Right up here, started talking about growing in small foil pans. They have holes in the bottom. Lettuce looks good, spinach is coming in, some onions, all that kind of stuff. But you can really grow leafy greens in a flat like this. This is how they do a lot of microgreens and even smaller trays. As long as you keep them watered and fed, they're going to do really well. Radishes have been growing in this flower box. I always like giving people an update on this because you get beautiful radishes in this really small space. Lettuce is back there, spinach is back there. So you don't need a garden the size of mine to have some fun to learn to grow some greens and some grow some vegetables. All right, let's walk. Actually, we'll just walk over there. So there's a behind the shed scene. That's all gonna get cleaned up in there. And I just wanna show you as we walk around to the front of the garden, it's one of my favorite trees. That is a maple tree and now that the cold weather's coming, it just turns that beautiful, beautiful red. And I really enjoy seeing that every year and appreciate it. That tree, along with ourselves, has a limited life, but that tree is starting to die off a little bit and hopefully it hangs around for 10 years. So let, or 10 more years. Let's go into here, show you what's going on. The deer pressure really increased this year and they have been quite brave. They actually got into the, the globe artichokes um, and they used to stay away from here because it was just too much on the ground, but they're getting used to everything. So they're eating the globe artichokes, they're shredding down the beans and stuff like that, which I understood. But what's really interesting is that they uh, don't even mind all this wire in here. So one of them just climbed right into here, chewed down all the sweet potatoes, um, which is okay because it's really time for them to start I'm going to start harvesting them. As soon as a frost comes that's more severe than the little one we had, I'll just take out all the sweet potatoes. I'll be doing a video on that. They're chewing down the potatoes that are there. I've never had that problem before. Um, oh, and I left the gate open. That's nice. You can see that they just walk through here, chew down the potatoes. Um, looks like they got a pumpkin back there too. Or I'm sorry, a watermelon. So all this is going to get harvested. Everything will get cleaned up. In the next Friday morning ramblings, the garden should be in the shape that I want it to be for really the fall. We'll go inside. So the tomatoes that are in here, once the temperatures, the soil temperature actually, really gets down to, I just wanted to cut in because when I was editing the video, I saw this and this is deer fur and it's on the inside of the gate and it looks like the deer jumped this way and got caught. Some of the fur got caught on here and there's some fur right down there. So yesterday I noticed I left my other gate open and maybe the deer, you know, came down here, panicked, didn't know how to get out and just kind of leapt over the fence. But I thought that I would give you, you know, one quick minute on building a fence for protection. So my fence is four feet tall and it has this nice fencing in here where rabbits and other animals can't get through that. It's also got wood along the bottom so it's harder for them to dig under and if I needed to I would move boards out this way or some fencing underground this way so nothing can dig under here. That is protected and kept rabbits out, groundhogs out, you know as long as I keep the gate closed. So I also, and this is four feet high, deer could jump over this but when you put 
things out here, except for the brave deer I have now that crawl into that, they don't really want to mess with this, so they're not going to jump all the way over this to get in there. Plus, I have stuff down here. They don't want to jump and break a leg. But I built six-foot posts into this, and I have a wire that goes across. So this does provide protection for them not to be able to jump that six feet and get into here. So if this fur was maybe on this outside, I would have thought the deer jumped over this way. But just as a precaution, I'm just going to get a piece of rope and hang it across here. And then I'll just be over to here. And I'll be able to unlatch it when I want to walk in there. But maybe I just need to really implement something like this throughout different spaces in the garden. But first thing I'm going to do is just a little space right in here. And then I'm going to make sure I keep the gates closed. If the gates are closed and I'm noticing deer damage, then they're starting to jump into my garden over the fence from somewhere else. And maybe like where it's open over there, I'm going to have to address that. 50 degrees, the nights are in the 40s, that soil temperature is dropping. The green growth may look pretty good, but you're just not going to get ripening tomatoes. So it's really time to pull them out. And some of the diseases are coming back. You get a different kind of fungus on there um, when temperatures come down. So fungus always survive, or always multiply, I should say, with different temperatures. So I get more of a leaf spot when it gets cooler and more rain. And then I get early blight when it gets hotter and just warmer. So all the tomatoes are going to get pulled out. I'm not going to yank out the entire plant and roots. I'm just going to cut it down. So any tomato plant that's in the ground, the roots are going to stay. They will decay. They will give back to the ground. And come spring, sure, I might have to kind of dig a hole or kind of loosen up the planting area. But I'm not going to turn the soil. I'm going to leave the roots in there. It, it provides space, air space in the soil as those roots decay out. It gives food to the microbiology and worms. Just leave them in there. It's just extra work. Anywhere that I might have large green tomatoes, I'll make fried green tomatoes. So I left this gate open too, because that's the only way the deer could get inside to eat the leaves. So you leave it open once. I'm lucky they didn't take out more of my plants. Bush beans, which I think is pretty cool. I've gotten, I don't even know, at least three, maybe a fourth harvest on here. If you really feed them, spray them, get rid of any fungus from the summer, they're going to come back and they're going to give you another wave of green beans. A lot of people just pull them out. You can sort of cut back the spent flowers and uh, growth and just leave the roots in there and then new growth comes in. It's also just as easy sometimes as these are maturing and you're harvesting to put in other beans and the yield is bigger on freshly planted seed but that doesn't mean you can't keep growing the bush beans and getting a harvest out of there. Kohlrabi starting to come up uh, or starting to bulb up. I sometimes have an issue with the bulb forming but we'll see how it goes. They look pretty good. I can see footprints in there too. So the deer were walking around. Peas look good. Radishes look good. Carrots. I'm harvesting these already. That's one from, I think it's probably planted late July, maybe early August. Carrots, I think, do really well here in Maryland Zone 7. If you plant them when it's warm, they germinate, they get established, they grow much more quickly. And then a cool season, cool weather comes in and they grow nice and slowly and they're just really sweet and delicious. Beans will, actually these beans are drying, so I'm going to leave my beans up so that they dry and I have beans, dried beans for the winter. All the melons are going to get picked. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I have like probably nine or ten melons now to do something with. I'll probably give them away to friends. The Brussels look great. Those beds will get weeded out. No issues with that white butterfly, butterfly coming around. I stayed up on the sprays and the dustings. No uh, white flies, no green cabbage worms, and it's really a matter of staying up on your routine. And again, that's something I always stress and I will continue to stress um, really more for 2023. Now in 2023, and I just started it, I'm doing membership perks, different tiers, and it is a monthly payment, but there's different things going on that are exclusive to the the memberships um, and if it's something you're interested in please check it out I'm doing a lot of live streaming 
just for members and that makes the class so to speak really small so there's really opportunity to ask a lot of questions and get um, a discussion going about a topic that you're interested in and I'm and obviously I'll be there to answer questions talk gardening and what I like about it is the live Q&A it's really a small group I don't really see it getting you know past maybe a hundred people but that gives me a lot of time to sort of be your uh, personal mentor and I can answer questions really about whatever's going on in your garden butternut squash that are in here they're gonna actually be laid throughout the perimeter of my uh, wooded area I want to grow vining squash up there. I actually have some sp spaghetti squash that took off and is doing pretty well. Basically just opening up the space. More cool crops in there. We don't need to go over those. Everything that's on the ground is going to be cleared up. Those tomatoes are coming down. Um, looks like the deer did take a walk through here, which I'm surprised there's not more damage anyway. They were walking around. Let's see what they were eating. I don't really see anything, um, but I'll just leave this as it is. Whatever's going to grow will kind of grow up through the footprints, and that wasn't really too smart of me, actually. So, I mean, you can have all the deer protection in the world, but if the gardener's not going to pay enough attention to shut the gate, then you're going to have problems. Cauliflower all in here, doing beautifully. Like, I would have thought they would have chewed this down, but I'm very lucky. So the cauliflower head should start forming. Again, I've talked about this in the past. Here in Maryland, trying to grow cauliflower, broccoli, spring into later spring, early summer, just doesn't work. The soil, the soil gets too warm. I've been able to, oh, this is what they were eating. So there was lettuce in here. They chewed it all the way down, tore it out. So there were nice heads of lettuce in here that I was going to show you, but it looks like the deer got to them. That's okay because they're going to grow back. When you're harvesting the uh, loose leaf lettuce, cut it from the bottom, leave the roots in the ground, and they're going to grow more lettuce leaves. So it'll all work out in the end. This is just a nice beat up okra. Doesn't like the cold weather. Amazing plant. Basil. This is the basil I planted way back, maybe in May or something like that. It stayed protected in the summer with the shade from the green beans here and it's just growing and growing and growing. It's finally getting flower heads because I stopped harvesting it. But one plant survived the entire summer, which I think is pretty cool. Beets, cucumbers are dying off. They're all going to get pulled out. And it was really kind of fun to be able to just keep harvesting cucumbers all the way into October. They stay a little bit smaller. But with the tomatoes that were still hanging around, I was making tomato and cucumber salads. We'll go over to the left part of the garden shortly. This is what I was really worried about, to be honest, when we were back there. So the broccoli head is just beautiful. There's my hand to give you an idea. But I think that might double in size. And the other heads are starting to form. Actually, this was all I was worried about. I didn't want the deer to come over to here and see that this was gone. So, lucky me. Radishes are doing well. I've been harvesting them out of there, and you can just see, you know, nice sized radishes. That was the first round. Radishes are planted sporadically throughout here. I'm also in 2023 going to be selling select seeds that come directly from my garden. I used to do that more but now we order seeds and sort of hand select different stuff from different companies. So all the jalapenos on here, these are mixed variety. I'm going to be selling those. They will be from my garden. When you spin over to here, different hot peppers, I'll be harvesting them too. A lot more facing heavens will be coming. We're a little bit low on those, but I forgot the guys over here. So I don't eat the super hot peppers. I love to grow them. So these are all going to be harvested. There's ghost peppers, scorpion peppers, some other super hots in there. They're starting to kind of fade out from the cold nights. But super hots take a really long time to get going. And they don't really take off until really about August here. But, you know, they're just beautiful, I think, to watch, watch them grow. I mean, the colors are spectacular. Anyway, I'll be harvesting those. There's some super hot peppers right down there, those little tiny ones. So I'll be announcing that too as I harvest up. So this is all going to get cleaned out. 
stuff that I'm saving for seeds, those peppers will be processed this week. All the tomatoes are coming out. I have other waves of cool crops in here now. More radishes coming up back there. There is asparagus in there. It's still green. You want your asparagus after you harvest it a bit in May to let it grow and get as tall as it is there. Now's a great time to cut that back, put it into compost. I'm gonna clear out all the Mexican sunflower and just really open up my entire garden. We're coming down to another place where I had let us look like the deer were hanging out, having some fun here. Hopefully it's just my bad eyes. We'll see. More tomatoes. I mean, tucked, we'll come over to there. On this side, more kohlrabi. I grew a lot of it, just hopefully it's gonna bulb up just above the ground and it'll be delicious. Yeah, so the deer came over here, chewed down the bib lettuce, that will all come back. You know, just a mistake. I've come in here like years ago and I found a deer hanging out right in there and then they freak out and they run everywhere. Um, deer got out unharmed, but it just stomped most of my garden, just running around. Radishes, wave two. I mean, look. Everything is doing what it's supposed to do. I'll be cutting back the muscadines really heavily, following what it says in books to do, on videos to do. I just kind of let it grow out of control. I harvested a lot of fruit out of there, and it's really good, but I want maximum fruit production and complete shade over the tunnel not this jungle that's there but it was really cool it worked talk about that fig tree all the time don't know what that's going to do this year things look really good over here in the fruit section of the garden the globe artichokes are doing really well that's what the ones outside the fence should have looked like by now if we get into here this is my, let's see if I can do this slowly. The blueberries are under my arm. This is ginger. So the harvest is going to start now. I mean, look how beautiful that is. I'll actually bring this in and we'll cook with it today. Ginger did well. So I'm taking notes that the ginger bed that I put here to get some shade from the blueberry plants when the, the southern sun is over there has really made a difference. The ginger looks great. So I may put in more ginger along here. I'll get rid of the globe artichokes because they're, they're just too big, but they grew pretty well. But I'll have ginger all down here. So now is also the time to kind of be checking the boxes of what was successful in your garden, maybe expand upon it. And if you're not having success, then you just go ahead and you you know, you make adjustments. The peppers in here, remember they struggled in the beginning of the year? They are still producing. Being above the ground, when that frost came in, it didn't really bother them because the cold weather just settled down there. They look pretty good. Nice purple, yellows, more yellows in there. I may try and wrap these in some way with painter's plastic and kind of keep this space going. I'm not sure, but they're still flowering. So they do like being above the ground. The soil probably stays a little bit warmer because the heat is being collected by the metal here. So even when the cold comes, then the sun hits this and it's keeping the roots more regulated and warm than just being down in the ground. So I'm going to keep an eye on this, let these grow until they stop growing. And I'm just gonna kind of monitor how can I maximize this space next year? Maybe starting early, giving them protection, letting them grow, and then giving them more protection about now. And maybe I get peppers into December. We'll see how it goes. You know, slowly but surely. If you ever wonder what muscadines look like, here's a couple of them. This is other vines here. But that's them right down there. They look like grapes. They have seeds. They taste pretty good. I really like them. Even though I'm doing membership perks and it is a, you know, paid subscription, which I appreciate for those of you that are doing that, I'm still going to be doing my public videos. I'll still be doing the educational series, so not a whole lot is going to change. This mess will be cleaned up 
everything that's in there is going to be removed and I've dug down maybe 16 inches in there. The peppers that I showed you growing in clay pots are growing in those plastic pots. I'm going to try and overwinter some of them in there. That stays warm enough because you drop down to where the soil temperature is more regulated by being deeper in the ground and I don't think the peppers are going to freeze. I put in some plants last year. It was, of course, oh, here's where the deer came to. They ate every strawberry plant and you can tell it was a deer because they could go way up here. So this was just full of beautiful green leaves just like that. Again, I'm lucky because I'm not too worried about that because it is the winter is coming. So the roots are establishing. Everything will be okay. So over here, I had some uh, plants that would not survive the winter if I left them out. I stuck them into that cold frame with the dug down uh, earth and they survived perfectly well over the winter. As soon as I pulled them out in the spring, gave them some water, they came back. So, well, this is a little bit disappointing now, but this tower, I was gonna show this off. I mean, it was just masses of green strawberry leaves. This, I did a video on and just showed you how to prep the soil. Same thing in there. They ate the strawberries out of there. That container, I didn't prep and didn't fix up. I will, but everything looked good. So let's move on from there. Eggplant are still doing well. These are probably gonna get moved just to a different location, um, but they're producing. Tower is set up now with leafy greens. I'm surprised they didn't get an errant snack on that. That's a transition that I do with the green stock towers. I am affiliated with them. This is what I recommend. I've been using them for seven years. Seven gallons worth of soil in each tier. Growing radishes up there this year, up here in the tiers this year. I'll show you how that goes. But they really work well for a leafy green garden. And it's just a little two and a half foot by two and a half foot print right there. And then you get five tiers, which is a lot of space for growing. Some of the beans that are going to be, well, they are dried. It's been raining, so I'll let these dry thoroughly, and then I will just take the beans out, store them, and I'll have the ability to make bean soup and different kinds of things over the winter. I'm gonna come down here a little bit and spin around so my shadow's not in everything. This space, I think, is looking pretty good. Final wave of radishes are in there. I have lettuces, um, arugula, different things growing, more spinach. So I'm really keeping the beds going with the leafy greens and the winter crops. Be harvesting the peanuts out of there. We could probably look now. I wonder if there's anything. I always wonder, let's just see. There we go. So the peanuts look pretty cool. I have another plant that I'll leave in longer because it looks like some of them are still developing. But that's how you grow peanuts and this was just one plant so next year I'll probably do more. I'll probably save, save these so that I can grow you know from seed. Beans, well not the beans, peanuts look pretty good. Watermelon plants still surviving but that's not going to do anything. So all the warm crops really at this point, end of September, when your temperatures start hitting the 50s at night, 40s at night, they're just gonna really slow down and they're not gonna do a whole lot. So yeah, the upper growth might look beautiful, but you're not gonna get a whole lot out of there. There's weeding I have to get in here and do. That will be all set up for um, next week when you do the Friday morning ramblings. I'm also gonna do that um, with an exclusive launch, which means members can kind of do, you know, the viewing party with me. We can talk about the video and then it will be public. But that's kind of how the, the memberships are working, how the perks are working. So every once in a while, I'll do a premiere of the Rambling series and it'll just give a chance for people to talk with me and we can kind of chat about what's going on in our gardens. Cucumbers still coming in. You know, and this growth looks great. And you might want to be like, oh, let me keep it because I got flowers, the tomatoes look good. They're just not going to make it. So it's time to really open up all the space in here and, you know, just get ready for the fall. More cauliflower in here. 
bunching onions, all kinds of stuff going on. More beans drying. I'm going to take a lot of the beans, the pole beans too that are dried, and that's the wood line right over there that's going to have the uh, butternut squash dropped along there, tomatoes dropped along there, um, the beans dropped along there, and we'll see what survives. Horseradish is going crazy. I'll probably have to figure out how to harvest that, or maybe I'll just let it, you know, grow for another season. This space is doing really well, and it looks like the deer got in there too, but they didn't even eat the kale down. Like, I am really lucky. Pak choy, a little bit of bolting going on there, but with the cool weather coming, this is going to fill out, and it's just a nice, delicious, cool weather crop. Spinach, lucky again, that didn't get chewed down. The kale is coming in nicely. I've been eating salads off of the kale. That's kind of just one of my favorite things. So I really encourage people to grow what you like. Don't necessarily feel like you got to grow a little bit of everything. And if I didn't mention it as I'm rambling away, those butternut squash, I'm still eating them. I'll take probably six that I'll keep, but the rest of them are going to go along the wood line. And I'm just going to let them decay, and then hopefully I have some pretty cool butternut squash growing up through the trees. Purple top turnips. Purple top turnips. We're going to have to have my shadow in here a little bit. Swiss chard looks good. Peas are coming in. The kale is beautiful. This is when I would come out and inspect it. I'd be looking for white flies. The only specks that I see now is the water droplets coming off. And that's what you want. Like if you hit this and you see little white things flying around, you have white flies. So far, so good. The tip too I have is when you're harvesting it, make sure you harvest most of it from the bottom. I missed a couple. And work your way up because the stem will keep growing. You'll get all the new growth up here. And as you open up the bottom, that decreases the likelihood of getting pests and disease because you're just giving them a lot of airflow. Sitting in here are my purple top turnips, wave two. My other wave is doing pretty good, but they're starting to form right down there. So these should be ready in a couple of weeks. So I'm still in transition. I kind of took off the last couple of weeks. Um, haven't been staying up on the garden well, but good enough that it's functioning and it's growing. So next week, this will all be cleaned out, but for what I'm keeping for drying, maybe what I'm still keeping to harvest seeds from, and it'll all be all cool weather crops. Overall, pretty good. Number one lesson is if you have a fence, make sure you close the gates. So this is my garden as of uh, almost mid-October. Thanks for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. And, you're, and if you're interested in the uh, membership perks, you can check them out. I'm trying to set up two different tiers and making it really valuable for the individual who may want to still, who may be just starting out in gardening or feel like they have a lot to learn. A lot, why can't I say that? Let's, re, let's do it over. So in case you're curious, this is how I edit my videos. I just start over. And please check out the membership tiers if you are interested in learning more about gardening or you're just getting started as a first-time gardener. It's a really nice way to do live events with me, have a small group and answer all the questions um, and ask all the questions you need to ask and I'll hopefully be able to answer them with you. And it's really nice too because the people there are wonderful and you can start up relationships with other gardeners that may be in your zone. All right, thanks so much for watching. And again, please check out my seed shop and enjoy your fall garden. Thanks for watching.